got uh, we've got Megan Clancy to close the close the first half out with some music, and then all the ones in the second half like that second name as I, as I, as I believe uh, that to be the case. Um, <laughs> but uh, if it fucks up, it's not my fault. Um, right, ladies and gentlemen, could we have a quick practice round of applause and a couple of three? What do you think? Now, if you could multiply that applause by about 100, get up for the first time of the evening for the one and only for Ruth! I'm just really into shit. I like to know about where people shit, how much they shit, what what they eat that makes them shit, and I also like to um, just know basically a lot about shit. Um, I must warn anyone who's easily offended in the audience that the word shit will be used quite a lot in my act, um, but I am the least of your worries. You'll see what I mean later. Um, another, another interesting thing about me is I've got a double barrel surname. And this may not sound that weird, my, my surname is Kennedy Walker, but it actually brings some really interesting situations, especially since starting the PhD. Because obviously people see my email, they see that I'm doing a degree at the university, I've got a double barrel name. I think they think I'm some kind of lord or something. Um, it doesn't actually think I'm posh, so how can I be? I'm Scouse. <laughs> if anyone who doesn't know what Scouse means, it basically means somebody from Liverpool, or in other words, thief. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter what title I've got, if I've, how many names, how many titles, um, my family still always keep me grounded. If I have to tell my granddad one more time that me becoming a doctor does not mean I can change his catheter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's weird a bit thin now. Anyway, um, I'm getting to that age, uh, mid-twenties, late twenties, uh, where all my friends are getting married. So basically, every weekend is pretty much spent at weddings. Yeah, hopefully some of you know what, 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 what I mean by that. And um, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all great fun. Uh, but I start to notice, notice a bit of a strange trend. So that every time I, uh, I get invited to weddings, I'm always uh, sat right in the back of the room. You know that table right in the corner, the first way from the bride and groom? And I always start with the weird family members. The bride and groom don't want anywhere near them. I don't know whether that is because they think that I'm responsible and sensible and I'll keep them distracted, whether they think I'm equally as, as weird. So they said, sit there, it's all, it's all great. Um, we start off you know, complaining about the weather. We talk about um, you know, how we know the bride and groom, where we're from. And then they get on to what you do for a living. Now for me, obviously, as a PhD student working in shit, this is kind of a bit, a bit of a hairy moment. I can either, I can either go with the um, well, yeah, they, this kind of, they always um, ask me about what I do, just as the starters are being served, this seems to always happen. So I'm there thinking, I can either say, um, I'll tell you after, after food, in which they're going to think I'm a complete weirdo, or I can, I can say, I just say it. So recently, in the last few times I've, I've, I've kept it, I've kept still, I've said, you know, wait till later, but a few, a few weeks ago I was at a wedding, I thought, you know what, I'm going to be brave. I am going to tell them what I do, even if they're eating the starters. So the conversation went something like this. Uh, Ruth, uh, what do you do for a living? Well, actually, um, I'm doing a PhD in faecal sludge management, um, <laughs> in low-income and plant settlements in Lusaka, Zambia. <laughs> Bullshit. No, 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 I'm just into, into human shit. <laughs> Fair to say, the starters were not as tasty, the, uh, you know, from that point onwards. Um, my line of work is actually really dangerous. Like, I know it doesn't sound that dangerous, but uh, a few years ago I actually caught a tropical disease. Oh, I saw quite a few people kind of go, oh, don't worry, it's not contagious. Um, uh, but, it, but what it meant was I had to go to the doctors quite a lot and give a lot of shit samples, which is pretty, I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but it's one of my most embarrassing experiences of your life. <laughs> Probably worse than this, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, and. So in my doctors especially, the, the toilet is basically in the waiting room. So you go, you know the minute you enter to go for a shit, it's like a normal toilet, you go for a shit and um, you've been there for a bit too long, everyone knows what you're doing. 
But in, but in my doctor's surgery, you then come out with your sample and you've got to give it to the receptionist. And the receptionist is also in the waiting room. And you have this like weird exchange. Anybody who's given a shit sample knows what you're doing. The receptionist is like that. And you're all there just like, you know, I don't know, here's my sample. But um, yeah, when I was, um, when I was at its peak, um, I, had give, I had to give about four or five samples at the hospital. So in there, I don't know what was going on with the NHS this day because maybe they're on strike, I don't know. Um, but they said to me, oh, oh no, you're going to have to take your sample to the lab across town. I'm like, what? All right then. And she's like, yeah, yeah. Wrote the address, drew, drew a map for me. Great. I said, uh, oh, I haven't actually brought that. I didn't realise I'd be doing courier service. Um, she said, oh, don't worry, don't worry, I've got one for you. She gets a plastic bag out, and it's an Aldi bag. Now, <laughs> not being funny, but if anyone else is like me, you remember at school where your mum would give you a pea kit or your sandwiches, you did not want the Aldi bag. You definitely didn't want the little bag. And for sure, in my school, you did not want the Netto bag. Because then people knew you shopped at Netto. It was a good week. It was a good week if you got your Mark Spencer's bag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so she gives me Aldi bag. I thought, right, get over it. I'm not 12 anymore. I uh, walked across town, and oh, lo and behold, I uh, bumped into someone I haven't seen for a while. Uh, one of the most popular people at school. You know the ones that even like 13 years later still give you like the kind of weird stomach kind of twitchy thing. And you usually come like a weirdo straight away. Uh, see her? She's oh. Really? How are you doing? I said, yeah, all right. So I looked at the bag and thinking, oh, bloody hell, I've just seen the bag. And, um, and yeah, and then she said, oh, doing anything nice? Doing any shopping? Any normal person would have just gone, yeah, I've just been food shopping, but I did not want her to know means Aldi. So I go, no, 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 I've just been uh, giving some shit samples, I'm just taking some lap. <laughs> Fair to say, she's not having me on Facebook, so I think uh, I am a weirdo in her eyes. Um, probably one of the most... So yeah, as I say, doing shit, it's really exciting and I get to travel a lot. And probably one of the best experiences of my life happened to me actually earlier this year. So I did quite a bit of work in Indonesia um, and I was working for a company and they said to me, Ruth, we need some samples, some shit samples. I said, yeah, fair enough. I'll go to the rescue. Uh, we need some shit samples of septic tanks, so that was fine. I arrived at the community and this is just great. So obviously in these communities, they don't often see that many white people where I work. So you get this like automatic kind of fame reaction, you have all these kids screaming at you. If anyone's been anywhere like Africa, India, you know what it's like. They're all screaming at you like, woo, like running after you, you have these party and big load of kids and everyone following you. I kind of feel like it's probably like being in one direction, as well I like to think of myself anyway. Um, and for me as a female, it's really funny because uh, I always get, you get a lot of men uh, barting for you, you know, like, Two cows, no, 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 three cows, four cows. They basically want to marry me, uh, and they do it by just bargaining me on, on price. The most I've been offered so far is 12 cows, six goats, and a couple of sheep. Um, I, I think that's a pretty reasonable price, to be honest, but uh, my mum's backyard is not big enough, so yeah. Um, but anyway, so this happened, so I there, I arrived at the community, it's all great, and it's always really happy, clappy, nice, until they realise what I'm doing. They go, oh. Oh, what's she doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just here. Can you want to get your toilet? And then I'm like, down, down, you know, down on the floor, just shoveling, basically shoveling their shit. And you know, and they're probably thinking, I hope she's not going to make a a um, clone of me or something. But anyway, um, so yeah, so they, um, so it's always the same reaction. They're really happy, and then when they realise what I'm doing, they suddenly just turn to ice. You know, they're all looking at me, beady eyes, like, what the hell is she doing? So anyway, this time, this day, I was there giving the sample, like smiling, like, oh yeah like me, like me, and the weirdest thing happens, so this guy turns up on a moped with the biggest speaker I've ever seen in my life on the back of it. Now, you know, you know mopeds in overseas, they, they, I've seen beds, I've seen, I've seen all sorts, but anyway, this is the biggest speaker I've ever seen, the campus guy I've ever seen, Indonesian guy, gets off, gets off, full lycra suit, like this, switches the switch, this horrible kind of rave music, boom, boom, boom. I'm on the floor at this point, like still looking at him going, what the hell is going on? And the next, the next minute, all I can describe it in as was an Indonesian flash mob. All these women here, full burkas, full dresses, in like about 35 degree heat, all going with this guy. This guy's in front of them and they're all doing this dance move and basically it was mobiles on men. 
Right, so I'm there, on the floor, still. Um, and they're like this, oh, join us, Ruth. Join us. I'm like, no, 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 no. Leave it to you. Within about five seconds, I'm not sure, I was like this. You know, the music went. And there I found myself, basically, with all these Indonesian, right in the middle of them all, just doing all the moves like this, in a full lab coat, plastic gloves, shit all over. <laughs> I didn't even get dressed for the occasion. And this is actually on video, so there's actually video evidence of me doing this uh, about February this year. So yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's all interesting, being PhD student and shit. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you very much. My name's Ruth, and I love shit. Thank <laughs> you.